every wave can only be moving on an ocean. It's not possible that there's waves if there's no ocean. So every bird is flying in the sky. It's not possible unless there's a sky. So the the situation of emptiness is that it is the the major, it is the vastly huge um, existence and uh, everything else is is uh, dependent is dependent upon it and is at the same time it you see so uh, one should never worry thoughts uh, uh, even falling asleep don't worry you wake up just get back to it you see so um, so it's uh, uh, it's it's always okay, no matter what's happening. You become very angry temporarily, become very sad temporarily. Uh, just accept it and and allow allow for it. You see. You may recall the wonderful thing for <coughs> modern people, is that the Sufis of the period, for example, of um, Shabbat study, they they have moved in some ways to an existentialist presentation, and that's why uh, is very useful for us as Westerners or uh, people from other countries who now live here, who have come from other cultures perfectly all right if we have a religious tradition. It involves uh, maybe passionate prayer, uh, trust, uh, reliance upon mercy. But the Sufis, they're trying to refine for a person um, what they're trying to do. They're, they're all for civilization, constructiveness, worship, etc. But this is still not their objective. So the wonderful thing about the Sufis is they um, learn from each other. And they, so by the time we get to Shabbat study, for example, um, frequently I quote to you the, uh, this one section <coughs> um, where um, he, he says um, Kishod bar siri wahadat wakef akher shena soyi che omad aref akher kasi bar siri wahadat gashd wakef translation. The Persian is easier for me to remember. But because Persian is rhyming and it has meter and and as a translator I can't duplicate that so it's much easier for me to remember 
the doctrine in the, the original language. And I could translate it, but I could do better just reading the, the, my existing translation. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you guys know this, uh, this book. Uh, you guys remember this book? That I don't know how many of you have this book, but... Yeah, uh, I got it from the Shambhala bookstore when it was still in yeah. existence on Telegraph. Yeah, okay. I got definitely some from you. This is a um, handmade book made in Berkeley, California. After uh, Ustad Zore and was helping me, um, after he accepted the um, permission that I had to use Abjad, which he generally didn't like the idea. But one of the things you'll notice on it, here's the cover. It's very bright. So it is visible, it is existent, you see. But on the back, there's the same design. I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's stamped in place. On the cover are all the divine names, all the divine names in a secret uh, abjad, meaning numerological formula. So this book, I thought you were going to bring the other one, but uh, so I'll try not to get absorbed in this, but, but I have um, copies of this book left. They're very expensive to make, actually. I don't know what they were charging for at the time in Shambhala, but... You charged me $100. Yeah, I was going to say, they're very expensive to make. Whoever gives $100 to go to orphans in Afghanistan, I will give beautiful copies of this book. So you just tell me. Yeah, so, so I'll bring some books here, but... Yeah, so, so they are they are very beautiful. And our friend in Turkey, who's a Sufi, he did Hikmet Baruchugil. He did the, the beautiful um, insert, you see? The marbling. The marbling. Yeah. So, Ebru, um, as they say in Turkish, huh? means from the clouds, Abr, on the water, sort of, that's the idea. But back to the topic. Um, see, I think it's maybe seven. No, it's not seven. Uh, maybe fifth. Yeah, okay. Fifth inquiry. Who may become aware of the secret of unity? What is known by the Arif, the Sufi Gnostic. Reply by Shabbat study. Question put to him by a great Sufi in Afghanistan in Herat. The messenger arrives <coughs> where Shabbat study is, is Shabbat near close to Tabriz and, and in the assembly the question is asked and the questions are being answered. A person attains to the awareness of unity who does not stop at any spiritual station of the way. The heart of the Aref is the knower of being. It has become the witness of absolute being. He or she knows no existence except real existence. He or she has lost any existence except for the real. Your existence is all thorns and weeds. Make a clean sweep and throw them away now. Go now and sweep out the house of the self. Make ready a place for the beloved. When you have left, he will come within. Through you, but without you, he will show his beauty. 
So, as you know from the Persian, uh, Shabbat is using uh, the Arabic word, wujud, and the Persian word, hasti. Because they, they, they have entered a time that uh, they have decided to be more specific about what their aim is. And their aim is to explain uh, they, Heidegger would have liked them, for example. The, the uh, modern thinkers about it. existence itself would like them. Uh, Heidegger says very difficult to, impossible to convey what existence really is. Um, but in beauty, we could see a true sign of it. This sounds like Shabbat doesn't it? So in other words, um, if you were, it, it is like air, like I said, the bird is flying, and yes, we see the bird. Isn't the sky more vast than the bird? Very vast. Maybe not visible. Um, someone raised as a wave, are they able to understand or distinguish ocean? Or are they fixed upon the shape of the wave and are unable to understand ocean or see ocean? They are never away from it. The bird is never flying outside of the sky. So the, they, they are trying to explain that um, existence is not a concept. It is a, it's a reality. It's an actuality. Existence is an actuality. And of existence, either it is manifest, you see, wa huwa zahiru, wa huwa botan, you see. So he is either manifesting his existence or it is implicit in a person's nature the key doctrine of the existential Sufi. So we, we as, as uh, for example, myself as Muslim, I, we bring a little bit of uh, fire to boiling the water, you know. So we, in other words, we, we worship because we, we, we use passion also. Because if there's beauty, should there not be passion? Even though beauty is a sign of what is invisible in existence. But the moment beauty appears, is there no passion? Watch how many people become crazy because of beauty. <laughs> Just watch. Has, have none of you become crazy because of beauty? I think most of you have become crazy because of beauty at one point or another, you see. And the Suvi poetry is focused on this. But the problem is uh, understanding that uh, Sufism is, is, is grasping what is holding beauty. So beauty is one thing, passion is one thing, but this is not the completeness or the objective of these Sufis that we're talking about now. Their, their objective is that one learns to how to get out of the way, how to perceive really, because if you were wave, uh, it was a good example because it's a very common Sufi metaphor. Uh, most of my life as a wave is, is completely absorbed and, and hypnotized and, and um, incapacitated by my focus upon the foam of the surf and, and the, 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 the form of the wave. Um, I'm in a great mood, I'm on top of the world, I am a tsunami practically, you see. I am in terrible straits, devastated, I'm sort of like the foam kind of rushing up the beach onto the shore, you see, disappearing into the sand. Neither of them are uh, grasping the, the nature of the water, you see. So this is why it's very natural. One cannot explain it except through imagery and metaphor, but, but one can say what it is not, agreed? It is not 
the manifestation of visions. It, it is not that. That is what is what is coming from this ocean or this sky. So I can understand what it is not. And n- not that it's bad. If I see bird, then the sky is very beautiful, agreed. I hope it's not like you know, a vulture or something chasing me, knowing I'm about to turn 70 and sort of, like, sort of <laughs> follow me around, you know. It's not, it, hopefully it's not like that. Hopefully it's a beautiful bird flying in the sky. And, but it, so I, I see it in my vision. Let's say it's something beautiful. I see it in my vision in, in Zikr, and, and I, I, I say, uh, I'm doing Zikr, so I'm saying name of Allah. I'm saying who... I'm saying Ahad, which is our teacher taught this, out of courtesy to your teacher, uh, uh, follow them. Uh, 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 meaning, meaning uh, your teacher might be Jesus. Your teacher, whatever your teacher is, follow your teacher. Because it's a, a handle. It's a, you have a staff. You're, you're lame, and you take the staff, and you walk with it, you see? So you follow, follow the teacher. Now, our teacher said, say the essential names because they are closest to the water. So he said, Allah, who, Ahad. Aren't they the same thing? Allah and Ahad. Yes, on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's different, slightly different, you see. So, but you can also say, La ilaha illallah. You can say, uh, La ilaha illa anta, subhanak. You see, you can, you can, it's okay, because the, you, if you're honoring the tradition, you realize any divine name. Uh, if somebody is a, a Christian, say, by all means, you know, uh, 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 Jesus is, is the spirit of God from the point of view of Muslims, you see? So, so uh, we, we have no problem. We, we just, uh, we, we realize we are after the objective, realize that, this form is very temporary, very temporary. If you stay stuck in the form, uh, you will not grasp, even though you were given the means, you were given the means from the beginning, everyone. Like you have a mirror, and all you have to do is polish it. To say uh, that I have no mirror is ignorance. Everyone was given a mirror. And somebody said, no, there's no way. I said, listen. Just please, just sit quietly, let everything go. Forget all the big dreams, all the big, uh, I saw so-and-so, I died 10 minutes ago, and then I'm, no, forget all of this stuff, you see. Just say, this is not what I'm after. I'm after something that is not visible, it is not tangible, and I will only know it by a special part of myself. And in, in Sufism and in many traditions, this is this part of ourselves. So we will also, it is true, it has a physicality where it might manifest. So a lot of, when you see somebody thinking, very often <coughs> psychologists have said, oh look, their eyes are pointing this way. So using sort of the right brain, left brain model, they realize there is actually a, a, a biological and neurological framework. We don't this is all true, this, we don't object to this. This is all true. But uh, just as somebody could say, yes, we, we track this person's thought process by uh, tapping their brain or their brain waves or however, in, in, uh, the problem is demonstrating the proof is difficult for us because we're saying the proof is you, you, you sit there and you forget listening to us. You, see, you sit there, you forget everything, you forget the... The, the, the doctrine, you forget listening, you just follow one thing, which is that you're going to stay peaceful and, and, and waiting uh, to know what is uh, at the most profound level of yourself. And it's a very hard thing for people to do, to sit like this for an hour or whatever we sit. Um, uh, uh, sometimes I may sit for an hour and a half, but I know it's hard for people. Sometimes I go into an assembly and I realize they cannot handle it, so I will sit for 15 minutes or for half an hour. But you will know for yourself <clears throat> how long it takes for you to, to uh, become um, aware. You see? Because in, in Shabbosarda, he's talking about kishot bashiri wahadat ocher. 
Siddhi Wahadat, the secret of unity, isn't that the key of most religions, the secret of unity? And just saying, uh, la ilaha illallah, yes, this is, this is Tawheed. Tawheed meaning the expression of unity, but it is not, in the Sufi way, it is not sufficient. It, you could have just borrowed this, taqlid, you see, you could, take it, you could be imitating it. But if you want to know it, so Shabbatari is to consider what he's saying. He doesn't start with existence. He says, who has become aware of the secret of unity? He is equating the secret of unity with true existence. You see? The sky is unity, and the bird in it does not take away from the unity. It's part of the unity, but is part of the expression of the unity. See, so the, the secret of unity can only be found really in uh, a gift from God, but God says he will give the gift as the person is purifying. Sufi means to be purifying, to, to, to work, to, to purify, to be able to witness this. Kishod bar siri wahdat waqif akhir. Shanasai chi amat arif akhir. What is it, therefore, that such a person can know? Kasi bar siri wahdat gashd waqif. Ki u waqif nashod and dar ma waqif. So there's the idea of wukuf is used in two. He's punning. He's punning here. Um, wukuf can mean awareness, and here he largely means it as awareness, but it can mean stopping. He deliberately using uh, these, these words that have the double meaning. It says, whoever is not stopping along the stages of the way, this is the person who will become aware. And he enters uh, the whole question of existence uh, when he talks about the heart. Okay, so Kasibar Siriwa that cash to walk if Oher Ki Uwak if Nashod and then Mawak if Dele or if what what is the Dele or if the, the Dele or is the heart of the knower. So or if means a uh, person has Ma'arifat uh, and and uh, this is happening in a particular place. He doesn't mean the physical heart. Our teacher, all teachers, they, they try to explain that to you, that the heart is, is, it is and it isn't. So, like, that's what I'm trying to say to you, is that the, the sky is what it is, and yet there is a puddle within the earth creature that reflects the clouds and the sky and the birds. You see? And the wind is blowing. The wind for the Sufis, it's a very lovely thing for the Arab-speaking people. It's hawa, huh? It's, it's the atmosphere, but it doesn't mean desire. So it's, it's making ripples, ripples on the what? So, so just think. Uh, or uh, Hafez will compare it to a cup. But in all cases, they, they mean something will happen in the earth creature as instrument. And that's why Rumi clarifies this by talking about the astrolabe. See, so I'm not going to, I can repeat that for you uh, at some time that you wish, but I'm trying to keep this easy for you to grasp. So there is something... Uh, the human can only know by not being there, the mystery, not being there, but always having been there. The owner of the house had the house built and always owned it. The tenant didn't realize that there was an owner to the house. The tenant goes outside to the mailbox and opens and says, oh, this is addressed to the owner of the house, you see. So the, the whole idea of, 
of the zikr is letting go, letting go, because it turned out all of the, the manifestations of emotion, intellect, uh, desire, fear, sorrow, all of these things, they are appearances emerging within existence. And therefore, every one of them could lead you to existence. Sorrow or joy. Being lost by God is a worthy experience. King of the world, master of all domains, is better for this person to be made lost by God. Then they will see they were not master of the world. They were not any of these things. So even being lost, being in sorrow, being in despair, could be a means to arriving at illumination. Uh, they call it illumination because it is it's a, it's manifestation of light. Alohu nuru samawati wal-art Use the light heavens we talked about and of the earth. The earth, you see. But the earth is, it, it has to have a, a niche, you see. And then from there the, the lamp of his is in a glass, which for the Sufis means the, the, the human soul, you see. And then it turns out the lamp, it, it has a, a flame, and, and the oil from it comes from a blessed olive tree, neither from the east nor from the west. And amazingly, the oil is luminous. The oil is luminous coming to it, you see. So this is the the Oya of Tawhid. If you read it carefully, you will see this is the Oya of Tawhid. Light is existence, pure existence, and, and uh, the, the human being has a relationship to it. It was given from the beginning, relationship to it. So, so sometimes there's, there's a difference between uh, visions that have um, intention, content, Etc. There's a difference between that and the purity of light, the, the just the simple existence of light. So very often, mystics in Zen, in in every tradition, they will experience this. You see, in Sufism, we we we, we experience that, and we say, "Oh, this is very uh, much what I'm reading in my holy book." So I will learn this ayah, and I will even say it in my zikr. The zikr should not be like reading a telephone book. You should realize when you have become uh, too uh, uh, habituated. You should, I'm going to switch, I'll switch to this uh, uh, divine name. I will, I will say an ayah to God. I will, I will say, meaning his ayah, not my ayah. You say, I will say, oh, you have a beautiful ayah. <laughs> that is such and such ayah. And uh, it means a, a sign, a sign or a, a verse, huh? for those of you who don't know. Uh, so, uh, it, it, in principle, it's a very simple idea. No matter what state you're in, um, God is um, pulling you by the forelock, as we said in the last meeting, huh? that, that you are being guided along. And uh, it could be very painful. We live in painful times. Think of the people of Afghanistan the people of Syria, the people, all of the people, the suffering, the, the, the suffering that so many people in the Western world with illness and so forth, but any one of these things could guide a person. So for it to become, um, uh, there's a channel. So Rumi says, you go and you bathe in the pool. This is zikr. You go and you bathe. He says, don't be embarrassed. You say, oh my God, my mind is full of horrible things. The Rumi says in the poem, don't be, in, don't be embarrassed. You, the only way you can get purified is come into the pool. And the person is thinking, oh my God, you know. I think I told you the experience where Usaf Khalid, he has my sweaty uh, sandals. I'm just like disgusted. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I, haven't, I haven't washed or cleaned them. They're like full of sweat. They're like dirty. I've been walking in the in the dirty road, and 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 I already know they smell. And he's holding them in front of me on purpose. 
because he's trying to break the idea that 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 the Sufi or the the purity rejects filth. No, the the purity does not reject filth. The purity wants to clean the filth. You see, so the Rumi has this analogy, and he says it's no problem for the pool because the pool, he says, has a channel to the sea. So there's the next thing to understand is you discover the pool, but then you keep working with the practice so that then you discover the channel to the sea. There's a big difference, agree? You discover the pool and you can bathe, which is the zikr. But you keep doing it until you find the channel to the sea that is in the pool that is purifying it. And this is called maqam. This is called stabilization, meaning you now have the means because you not only have the pool, but you have found the channel that's leading to the sea. Okay? So, so this is the uh, thing I wanted to convey to you. You live in a perfectly good culture for understanding this. We have so many ideas about existentialism, but we tend not to um, we tend not to let existence become a sacrament. We tend to think of it in a very different way, very kind of cold, um, just sort of matter of fact way that some people say, well, we don't even know if this word is needed or if it has any sense to it or whatever. But for us, it is um, because he says, I am the light of the heavens and the earth, then should the earth become illuminated, it also means that what has happened is that a place has opened. A place has opened. And it may happen in a lot of ways, but ultimately it will come down to the idea of sadr, the heart, or the or heart, uh, not in some ways not literally, but in other ways literally. Literally, one will find the, the sensation of that presence within the body, because the body was intended to participate in that. The mirror is reflecting the sunlight, and the mirror has a, a place, therefore. The mirror is, is in the physical world. It is, uh, uh, it is maybe made of some other material, like iron. The, the, the mirror is not the same thing as the sunlight, but the sunlight can express itself and show itself in the face of the mirror. Agreed? So again, these are common metaphors.